quick he did a good job. So. Yeah. Jared, yeah. Jared, yeah. Jared, yeah. 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 He'll be right in. It's a great place. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. He gets paid. Where's the treasure? Good evening. I'd like to call this evening's City of Union Town's regular City Council meeting to order of July the 10th, 2024 at 5 p.m. Roll call. Uh, Councilman Billy. Here. Councilman Thomas. Here. Councilman Winfrey. Here. Councilman Brown. Here. Mayor Gerke. Here. All rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. An executive session was held today, Wednesday, July the 10th, at 4.15 to discuss personnel matters. Um, I have a few, maybe more than a few comments to make, but we'll get through them as quickly as possible. A lot of thank yous, because a lot of things are going on here in the city, so we'll get started. Um, number one, I want to thank Michael Scott and the Herald Standard uh, for a fantastic job at Founders Day at Marshall Park on, the, on June 29th. It was well attended, had an array of activities and family-oriented um, events. Well, talking about Founders Day, a few thank yous are needed. Uh, we had our annual 5K run throughout the city on Saturday morning. It was a great time. Uh, thank you to Pastor Mac Reed and Leroy Townsend and all, and all the staff at City Hall for making this event a success. Again, another special thank you to Councilman Thomas and his street crew along with Joe Walkers for getting Marshall Park looking tip-top for the event. Thank you, guys. We look forward to next year's event and we'll be start planning for soon for our city's, city's 250th birthday in 2026. It's not that far away. Um, our Grant Street program is up and running, um, the recreation program. We have 52 basketball teams that are entered in the program with over 500 children participating. Where Gladman, Miss Amy Y, and Tiffany Blejo and their team deserves a big thank you along with Councilwoman Brown for coordinating the recreation department. This is a big job you've taken on Councilwoman Brown and we appreciate everything that you do. Sheepskin Trail, I think that's a conversation that we all have here in the city and um, it's exciting to see us moving forward. As you've noticed, all the rails on Beeson Boulevard have been re removed and plans are being made for the completion of the trail to run throughout the city. We will keep you updated as these plans become finalized. Thank you to Mr. Podolinski and Councilman Thomas and our street department for their hard work in making the construction possible. 
farmer's market. Um, I think we've had a farmer's market for three years, but we're just really growing. And it takes, a, it takes place every Saturday morning at 9 o'clock at Bailey Park, and it continues to thrive. The attendance is amazing. If you go down there, um, we have, whenever we bought the parking lot and decided to put the farmer's market there, I thought we have ample parking. But now they're starting to utilize South Union across the street, their rec center, and pluses lot and, and anywhere else they can park so that's really good big thank you to the parks and, and rec committee for their continued dedication and hard work um, and a special thank you goes out to south union uh, township supervisor jason scott for opening the restrooms at their rec center across the street from where the um, farmers market takes place um, thank you very much uh, jason and it's great to have such good neighbors um, August 6th at Grant Street Park is the annual Hoops and Scoop event. There'll be a lot of activities and they always offer free ice cream as long as supplies last. Um, thank you to the director of the East End Community Center, Steve Strange, and his team for coordinating this event. Um, August 10th and 11th is the um, annual Italian festival in downtown Uniontown, hosted by the Uniontown Suds of Italy. This is always a good time for the community and look forward to to seeing everyone there, we, we expect a large turnout as usual. Last but surely not least is the replacement of the damaged awning at Story Square. Um, had a lot of comments and sometimes they were negative comments about why can't we get this done, but it was quite a task to get someone to do that work. Um, but it, it, it's, it, it's completed and thank you to the director of the Redevelopment Authority, Crystal Simmons, the Redevelopment Board, and the staff at City Hall for getting this done. Ms. Simmons will speak more about this awning in her report. That's about all I have, and thank you. Um, do we have any comments on agenda items only? Ms. Trump? Good evening, my name is Kelly Trott, and I just wanted to comment on item 174. I want to thank council members for visiting the farmer's market and getting this to the agenda for a vote which helps clarify the rules of the market for our vendors and patrons. Um, I hope you support this and I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Any other comments on agenda items only? If not, that's all I have. Thank you. All right. We will note that there was an exec executive session held Wednesday. Can you sit down? Okay. Yes. Got it. Um, this just, just immediately prior to this meeting. Um, we also had a public hearing prior to this meeting as well that was advertised as well. That was on the demolitions um, that the city's going to undertake on some RDA properties. Um, we'll go right into the regular agenda. So item 169, uh, be it resolved by the city council, the city of Uniontown to receive and re the report of the treasurer for the month of June 6th, 2024, being the same as hereby received and filed. Councilman Billy? Yes. Councilman Thomas? Yes. Councilman Winfrey? Yes. Councilwoman Brown? Yes. Mayor Gerke? Yes. Be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Uniontown to accept the minutes of the June 6, 2024 regular council meeting be in the same as hereby accepted and filed. Councilman Thomas? Yes. Councilman Winfrey? Yes. Councilwoman Brown? Yes. Councilman Billy? Yes. Mayor Gerke? <coughs> yes. There was a request for a brief pause to enable to look over the items in the next agenda item. So,
Thank you. Be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Uniontown, Council hereby directs the Director of Accounts and Finance to make payment of the following invoices for services rendered or products procured for the City of Uniontown. June 2024 invoices in the amount of general fund $166,123.87, sewer fund $143,867.02, recreation $8,020.51, Recycling $4,577.66, Highway $16,094.33, Off Street $4,051.49, and Library $769.41. Uh, Councilman Winfrey? Yes. Councilwoman Brown? Yes. Councilman Billy? Yes. Councilman Thomas? Yes. Mayor Gerke? Yes. Be resolved by the City Council of the City of Uniontown to adopt Bill Number 1778, Proposed Ordinance Number 1758, an ordinance of the City of Uniontown, Fayette County, Pennsylvania, requiring the registration of abandoned real property and vacant buildings and structures with a notarized registration and the payment of registration fees, setting forth definitions, providing for the applic applicability of the ordinance, providing for the designation of local agents, providing for the posting of such property implementing a duty to amend registration, establishing the fees for registration and applicable waivers therefrom, providing procedures for appeals, providing that delinquent registration fees shall be a lien on such property, providing for annual and compliance inspections, setting forth provisions regarding rights of entry into such property and regarding search warrants and notices, providing provisions for special requested inspections and notices, providing for the administration and enforcement of the ordinance, setting forth violations and penalties, providing for compliance with other codes, declaring the provisions of this ordinance are non-exclusive, providing for the repeal of inconsistent ordinances, providing for an effective date for the ordinance. Um, and, and just for council's uh, information, again, this was introduced at the last meeting. This is that vacant property registration ordinance that was discussed. Um, Councilman Brown? Yes. Councilman Billy? Yes. Councilman Thomas? Yes. Councilman Winfrey? Yes. Mayor Gerke? Yes. Be resolved by the City Council of the City of Uniontown to adopt Bill Number 1779, Proposed Ordinance Number 1759, an ordinance of the City of Uniontown, Fayette County, Pennsylvania, providing for the collection, transportation, removal, and disposal of garbage and refuse, establishing rules and regulations, limiting collection of containerized garbage and refuse, prohibiting the accumulation of garbage and refuse, requiring payment for refuse and garbage service providing penalties for violations, repealing all inconsistent ordinances, and providing an effective date. Mm -hmm. um, and again, this just makes current your, your garbage collection ordinance to make sure everything's consistent and consolidated into a single ordinance. Um, Councilman Billy? Yes. Councilman Thomas? Yes. Councilman Winfrey? Yes. Councilman Brown? Yes. Mayor Gerke? Yes. Be resolved by the City Council of the City of Uniontown. Um, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Uniontown, Fayette County, Pennsylvania, authorizing the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation to conduct pre-construction activities for the North Gallatin Avenue Bridge Project, providing for an effective date for the ordinance. Um, this would be an introduction for, it would be bill number 1760, um, and if adopted, it would be, um, I'm sorry, it would be ordinance number 1760, it would be bill number 1780. Um, and, and what this, the purpose of this ordinance is this complies with the requirements under your agreement with PennDOT for the remediation and repair of the North Gallatin Avenue Bridge. This enables them to require any rights of way that would be necessary for that project. Um, Councilman Thomas? Yes. Councilman Winfrey? Yes. Councilwoman Brown? Yes. Councilman Billy? Yes. Mayor Gerke? Yes. Be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Uniontown to approve draft consent order regarding matter number 2023 of 2022 and 22165 of 2022, attached hereto and incorporated in by reference as proposed, and upon execution of the same by all parties, to authorize all city officials and employees to take such steps as may be necessary to effectuate the same. Um, Councilman Winfrey? Yes. Councilwoman Brown? Yes. Councilman Billy? Yes. Councilman Thomas? Yes. Mayor Gerke? Yes. Be resolved by the City Council of the City of Uniontown to approve the Recreation Board's request 
for an exemption waiver to permit the sale of alcoholic beverages at the farmers markets. Um, Councilwoman Brown. Yes. Councilman Billy. Yes. Councilman Thomas. Yes. Councilman Winfrey. No. And Mayor Gerke. No. Be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Uniontown to approve the Uniontown School District's boosters to operate and sell prepackaged goods at the Grant Street Park. Uh, Councilman Billy? Yes. Councilman Thomas? Yes. Councilman Winfrey? Yes. Councilwoman Brown? Yes. Mayor Gerke? Yes. Be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Uniontown that the Mayor of the City of Uniontown be authorized and directed to sign an attached signed the attached agreement with the Department of Transportation on its behalf and the city clerk be authorized and directed to test the same for the Jefferson Street Bridge project. Uh, Councilman Thomas? Yes. Councilman Winfrey? Yes. Councilwoman Brown? Yes. Councilman Billy? Yes. Mayor Kirk? Yes. Be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Uniontown to award the Dunlap Sewer Project the Morgan Excavating the apparent lowest bidder for the amount of $204,071 contingent upon the review and inspection of the city engineer and, and solicitor. Uh, Councilman Winfrey? Yes. Councilwoman Brown? Yes. Councilman Billy? Yes. Councilman Thomas? Yes. Mayor Gerke? Yes. You're resolved by the City Council of the City of Uniontown to approve the Flag Football League to be held at Uniontown Area High School Field for ages 18 and under. Um, Councilwoman Brown? Yes. Councilman Billy? Yes. Councilman Thomas? Yes. Councilman Winfrey? Yes. Mayor Gerke? Yes. Be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Uniontown to approve the purchase of four tires, including disposal, for the 2009 GMC from Tireman's Auto Body in the amount of $672. Councilman Billy? Yes. Councilman Thomas? Yes. Councilman Winfrey? Yes. Councilwoman Brown? Yes. Mayor Gerke? Yes. Be resolved by the City Council of the City of Uniontown to approve additional cost of $1,396.50 raised in donation funds for Grant Street Summer League basketball t-shirts from Uniontown Printing Press. Uh, Councilman Thomas? Yes. Councilman Winfrey? Yes. Councilwoman Brown? Yes. Councilman Billy? So this additional cost, this was with donations, the donations that came in from the... From my understanding, this is donated funds. The donated funds? Yes. Yes. Mayor Gerke? Yes. Be resolved by the City Council of the City of Uniontown to approve the request of the iWork program software for $20,000 with anticipated grant funding and other sources to assist in covering the costs. Councilman Winfrey? Yes. Councilwoman Brown? Yes. Councilman Billy? Yes. Councilman Thomas? Yes. Mayor Gerke? Yes. Be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Uniontown to approve the National Night Out in the City of Uniontown at Grant Street Park on August 6, 2024. Uh, Councilwoman Brown? Yes. Councilman Billy? Yes. Councilman Thomas? Yes. Councilman Winfrey? Yes. Mayor Gerke? Yes. Be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Uniontown to approve the street alley closure of behind 170 North Gallatin Avenue from July 26th through July 29th, closure to request attached here too. Councilman Billy? Yes. Councilman Thomas? Yes. Councilman Winfrey? Yes. Councilwoman Brown? Yes. Mayor Gerke? Yes. Right, those are all the regular agenda items we had. Thank you. Yep. Um, have our uh, committee reports. Ms. Simmons from the Redevelopment Authority. Good evening, Council. I'll just skip into my agenda to the iWork program. Um, I'm very excited that that was something that we could work through, and I just thought I'd share a little bit at the meeting um, how important iWork will be for efficient operations and enforcement and collections of revenue. So I'm, I'm really excited to get it set up for code enforcement, permitting, business license, and the Redevelopment Authority reviews the rental registration software later this month. So thank you very much. We will, we will get going on that and um, we will be very organized. It will assist with succession planning, 
and it's really going to bring Uniontown aligned with the others in the region. I was at a PA downtown conference um, in York, PA, and the conversations we were having, I recognized that Uniontown is aligned with the others. We're not behind anymore. We're, we're either following closely in someone's steps or, or in, an, you know, uh, in a situation where we're all kind of in the same, you know, we're just not behind. <laughs> we're doing great. So, okay, so the CDBG meetings, we had a meeting uh, open line on June 28th. Our next meeting is July 26th. It's the recurring meeting. I will send out an invitation for that meeting. Um, I usually just have the standing meeting, but this one we will need to, everyone to attend to review and score the CDBG requests. We use scoring criteria based on urgency, low to moderate income eligibility, meeting the national objective, um, a few other scores um, to determine which project we're going to submit for. So um, we have a deadline coming up of July 15th. If council has any projects they want to see considered, we need a project request form. I think there was some discussion about code enforcement. We would need a project request form before July 15th. And so our July 26th meeting will review, will review the, uh, all the project requests. This afternoon, I received the federal fiscal year 2012 and 2013 closure with a full, full satisfactory review from DCED. So um, I didn't work on those projects, but they're closed and we are in compliance and we can now be done with those files. So that's an achievement. The 2024 competitive application is still being reviewed for surveys. Uh, and then our existing program for the quick glance review sheet, Lemon Street Playground signage is underway now that we have approved signage standards. So I kind of delayed that just so we would have signs that matched all of our other parks and council has approved that this afternoon at 3 30 we had a public hearing for demolition of seven structures we had no public comment all of those structures are owned by the redevelopment authority and code does concur that they are in violation and need to come down so now that we've held that meeting that's the last step in the process when we're doing a building demolition, there's federal checklists that we have to we have to follow, and sometimes it will take time. We have to have a realtor involved for valuation certifications. We have to have an engineer give us inspections, uh, code enforcement letters, estimates for the work, value full full value of the property, land, and building, and and we're there. So I feel like we've made quite an achievement, and they're not even to the ground yet. So. We're doing that now. So those bid documents will be underway over this week and we hope to uh, get on site at the end of the month. The code enforcement process has been going very well. We've created what I call the code A team. We have been meeting, recurring. Um, Terrence has been doing really great with, um, you know, you really can't uh, teach someone to be ambitious and dedicated so he's already got that so we're doing great we're getting him set up for some training for code enforcement and we have did our first quarterly drawdown from the CDBG program to fund his salary and now we have the task of using that funding before the CDBG funds expire at the end of December and so in order to use that torch code enforcement we are utilizing k2 under an existing federally procured contract for them to provide some assistance to terrence and also to do some of the work the redevelopment authority needs to happen um, terrence is certainly able to do that it's just that our work is a little bit more mundane and not priority when it comes to how backed up he is right now with code enforcement so that's all going great we're handling the uniform relocation assistance for the project in East End for the playground. The Grant Street improvements bid opening is July 25th. We have a mandatory pre-bid meeting tomorrow, July 11th. If there is a contractor that wants to bid on that job, they'll need to get a hold of us at the Redevelopment Authority and we can get you that information. The bid opening is July 25th and we'll select the contractor immediately following. The State Theater 
project is under review, um, SHPO, a S State Historic Preservation Office, has reached out and wants clarification on the project as expected. It's, it's in the historic district. So we have quite a bit of information to get over to them. One Voice, One Community, we have agreements that will be coming up soon for the city's review. I will get those to Tim. That would need to be something entered into to hold the One Voice responsible for ensuring low to moderate income compliance. I have no updates uh, that's been provided to me for the sewage and transportation meeting. The existing owner-occupied housing rehabilitation is going well. The home applications have been released. We will, we will be releasing those. So we have 20, we, we have over 30 people on our wait list and we've used scoring criteria to determine the most urgent need, which includes um, elderly, disabled, children under the age of two, asbestos, lead, things that would put this situation in the house as urgent need. And so we're prioritizing those. Those folks will be getting an application so we can go forward with tier two environmental review. We'll get exterior structure reviews, inspections, and environmental assessments. The FAIR funding, um, I don't know if we had another meeting since then, but the FAIR funds for $125,000 has been awarded for the Winona Street development that's blight remediation. So at this time, it's to remove a few structures, which is nearby some of the properties that we already own. We're having conversations with other entities to possibly develop that area and put some things there. Housing, uh, we'll have more public meetings. We've sold two properties over the past month. We will be launching our adjacent property marketing for the properties that we'll be selling. We're continually maintaining those properties and we have several of our properties that we're working through maintenance on as well. And the mayor mentioned the awning replacement. I wanna thank Shannon and Desiree and Jackie for the help in putting together the insurance information. Um, insurance can be daunting. So we got that straightened out and the redevelopment authority will be holding a awning reveal July 11th to um, have all of our boards and everyone welcome and we're going to talk a little bit about the history of the awning the awning 65 feet wide and it is actually the largest awning in our region possibly pennsylvania but philadelphia has some larger awnings so it's kind of a big deal so we'll uh, have wmbs there they'll be covering live we're going to talk to the original contractor that installed it 25 years ago and the new contractor country canvas we also had some power washing done by carson um, Carson's pressure washing they did a really great job some spot cleaning and we're going to do full maintenance on the park uh, later down the road the downtown business district is very excited also to learn about the iWork program and is willing to and is interested in discussing how they can help the city absorb some of the first year costs to set up the iWork program for business license they're looking forward to have further conversations with the city and how they can potentially help enforce business license and provide resources to businesses so the businesses are getting something in return like welcome packages instructions um, contact information you know what do i need to operate a business in uniontown uh, flyers so we really look forward to having those discussions to see if the city can can support us to do that the Keystone designation grant, right now, there's $25 million presented in the governor's budget for the Main Street program. It is very important that we support that, and I hope to get something in front of city council where we can write that letter to support it of why that's so important, because that allows operation funds so the downtown district could get operating revenue for the Main Street progr program. Under the Economic Development Cooperation Agreement, the comprehensive plan, the request for qualifications launched, that's for comprehensive planning and a five-year strategic implementation plan. We have a mandatory preposal meeting July 18th. If you are a consultant who writes comprehensive plans, contact our office so we can get you set up for that meeting. We're gonna open those on August 5th, and we're doing this as a group scoring 
So the planning commission on behalf and representing the city council will review and score those proposals. And because the downtown business district and the redevelopment authority is using the grant funding they allocated to strategic planning, they also are gonna review those consultants. The scoring is gonna be averaged and the consultant selected would be the highest scoring averaged out of the three boards. So I think that's really going to be sure we get a great qualified consultant to do the job. Strategic management planning program. Um, we just talked about this last meeting, so we moved really quick. Thank you to city council. We got the RFQ out for the strategic management planning program, which would be a financial review, a technology review, internal organizational review. The application went in at the end of the month. They dropped our match down to only 10%. So we estimate the cost to be, let's just round it to 70,000. So the city will literally leverage $70,000 just by providing $7,000 towards this strategic plan, which would then turn into an actionable plan that DCED would fund if there's implementation, like maybe it recommends that there's new software, new computers, we can go to the state and get money to do some of those things that they think would be good. So it's not a plan that you just sit on the shelf. We'll continue to work off that plan. It'll be a, a five-year plan. It'll marry up really nicely with the comprehensive plan. I anticipate coming in September with the updated landlord registration program. The biggest comment we got about the landlord registration is the cost per unit and how we were structuring that. Um, I've listened to all the comments. I've done intense review of third class cities and the way that the other cities and, and municipalities have organized this. And I do feel that we can adjust that to work for everyone. So we will be presenting a new unit rate. We will not be charging an inspection rate while many of the other cities charge an inspection rate. And then if you don't pass the inspection, they charge you again. We wouldn't be putting that on to the, the landlords. It would strictly be for administration and license. And we have that in September. We'll launch the final ordinance and get that in front of city council then. The blight remediation plan. I know in your agenda item for iWork, it was discussed other potential funding. I feel comfortable to say after having some discussions with consultants this afternoon, that $10,000 of the blight remediation grant can go towards your iWork software purchase. This is really, uh, this, the software is gonna allow us to inventory the properties and conditions. Not only just blighted properties, but all of the properties. We'll have an inventory of the condition, status, rental of all the properties. We will put an RFQ out that requires a consultant to use iWork and to pull parcel data, pull the data into this system to where we can do blight remediation mapping to then pursue grant funding for that. So the task force meets again very soon and we'll put that RFQ out and that'll be our third third party RFQ that the city has done, I think in some time. So that's exciting. Besides that, we submitted greenways to trails and we're not submitting a multimodal at this time. It's due July 31st and there's just not been the preparation we've, we've needed. Um, we'll have other priorities. The only other thing I wanted to add is that, <laughs> just stop talking. The ordinances, um, we, we have two interns that's really been helping out. Uh, one, today in our storage, in the, in, in our storage area, we inventoried all of the Christmas decorations for Christmas in the square, and I just wanted to get a little plug in there. There was a lot of people that was like, why didn't you do it this way? Why didn't you do it this way? Well, you can volunteer for Christmas in the square. There is a committee, and you can volunteer, and you can come, and you can make recommendations, and we encourage you to do that so we can better, we can hold our events better. But we were able to inventory all of our items. They did a really good job, so the, the garage storage is looking great. And the interns are also working on, with uh, Desiree and Shannon's help, because um, they're, I've ha I have them right there in in the office with them, scanning all of the ordinances, all the way back till the beginning, to make them digital and inventorying the ordinances, so then we have a 
full binder of final ordinances for the city that's accessible to all the staff here at the city and also it can be put online to where you can search that easily with a control find or you know in a binder in alphabetical order and it's like that now it's just not digital so thank you i'll be done any questions no i just i would just like to say thank you um you know for brokering uh the meeting with our um an amazing presentation that the company has done this is going to step the city out of stone age right into the, the front end the forefront of technology um it'll be our part to get everybody else to buy in on it in the city um, this is going to help you tremendously uh, at the same time gets us all the data the statistics that we need uh, on uh, you know the, the state and federal level that we need um, I'm interested in meeting with the business district I'd like for you to set a meeting up for me and the mayor if, if that would be good that way we can bring back uh, you know good news and maybe some changes uh, we'll need to do that before we start talking, uh, you know, before we finalize a budget because that's all going to be something that we need to talk about moving forward and also um, in our licensing fees and our permit fees and, and bringing the city, also bringing the city up with technology, you also have to, to bring the city up with what the permit and licensing fees are as well. stamp program thank you extremely you know just I can't emphasize that enough uh, just um, just another area that is needed um, thank you you know for you know for the dedicated work and long hours uh, I, I came through uh, last week and uh, it was still eight o'clock and Crystal was upstairs uh, you know 8 p.m. so you know she's getting here bright and early and, uh, most mornings I talk to her in the morning so, you know, she's driving here a distance. How, how, how far now? About an hour. About an hour. And the dedication that, that she's bringing to the city and how, how council uh, is working well with uh, the redevelopment authority. And just to know that we are on par with other municipalities and other uh, third class cities in the state and we're not behind and, uh, and we're moving forward. It's very promising. Um, everyone at the table tonight, I'd like to thank every one of you for supporting our work. I, 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 I truly believe in this. Um, our cost, uh, uh, the total cost of the program, 20,000. Uh, as you heard, the director said that uh, they will be able to dedicate $10,000 from grant money uh, towards that program. And we're also in talks with the, the business district for five years so that so this this program that is is going to be um, it's going to be hard to explain exactly the capabilities that we're going to be able to do with this program because we're not there now and we don't have that um, uh, difficult for us to even produce an Excel spreadsheet out of the office so that's going to change and these things will change and um, you know thank you thank everybody at the table. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Crystal. Um, I have the report of the uh, code officer, Mr. Price. Good evening, uh, Mayor and Council. I uh, just want to thank you guys again for your uh, unwavering support in this role. Uh, it's uh, it's like uh, you can never really catch up, but it's been it's been busy, but it's been productive. Um, it's just been a blessing and an honor to work with the City Hall and uh, to Chief DeWitt. He's been a very uh, a big support and to uh, Crystal. And so I just want to thank you guys for all your support and the mayor. Uh, some people ask me, say, hey, what does your day normally look like? I get to the office about 7 o'clock. Uh, first thing I do, I check in with the mayor and we talk, we catch up, see, see if uh, either a person has had any complaints over the night. And there's some days, you know, the code phone is busy and his phone is ringing and there's some mornings you come in and it's, it's nothing, it's peaceful, so it's encouraging that. Uh, the biggest issue still at hand right now in the season that we're in is uh, high grass and trash and just encouraging everyone uh, who hasn't cut their grass to please cut their grass. And uh, it's, uh, it's kind of funny because you know some people are home when you knock on the doors, you can hear them walking through the house, but you know they see the cold Jeep out in the front 
and I laugh. You know, I used to get frustrated a little bit. Why well, didn't want to answer? But I laugh. I was like, duh. Yeah, they got the code sign is on the Jeep. So I just want to encourage people to cut your grass. Um, I'll give you a couple of days. If, if not, you'll get to serve a sweep citation. Uh, the good thing about it is uh, this past past couple of weeks, people have been coming in and paying a sweep citation. So that's good. Uh, it's encouraging to hear. Uh, up until this date, uh, we've served 14 citations. And I think we've had a total of $250 of those funds from those tickets of people coming and paying those. So just want to encourage everybody to cut your grass. Please pick up your trash. And one of the biggest things right now is just trying to clean up the alleys. Um, I hear some residents say, hey, there's people coming here at night that are dumping trash. And I encourage them. I say, hey, how you can help us, help, help the city, is take a picture of the license plate or take a, person, a picture of the uh, person who's dumping it. Uh, that way it can help us to be able to resolve these issues. And uh, I'm encouraged because uh, you can see progress being made. You drive around the city, you can see some people are taking care of their grass and people are taking care of their trash. So I know some people say, hey, we got a long way to go, but I think at the same time, we got to learn to celebrate the small victories of seeing the progress that's been made at hand. Uh, so we're not going to get there overnight, but I will say this, if we come together, and I said this at the last meeting, and we can just encourage everybody, hey, to do your part. Every, every little part can help out, uh, whether it's picking up trash or, or encouraging the landlords to, hey, take care of their responsibilities. Uh, we will see this place be where we all picture it to be. So I just want to encourage you to, to stay encouraged, uh, to speak life into the city. You know, I know you hear a lot of people saying, hey, the city is this and the city is that, but we need to start uplifting the city, not, you know, putting our foot on the city and kicking it down so much. But it's Uniontown is a beautiful place with beautiful people. So I'm encouraged to see, you know, how these things are going to continue to unfold. Uh, again, thank you guys so much for your support. Uh, any questions? Oh, okay, cool. Thank you so much. Y'all have a good one. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thanks, Terrence. Thanks for your hard work. Um, police report. Chief DeWitt. Good evening, Chief. Sorry if I sound a little under the weather and my voice breaks up here. Uh, allergies have been killing me today. So during the month of <clears throat> June, the Uniontown Police Department responded to 777 calls for service. A breakdown of some of those calls included one criminal homicide, uh, 20 vehicle accidents, seven assaults, three frauds, 31 welfare checks, 37 domestics, 20 assist fire calls, or I'm sorry, 20 assist EMS calls, uh, 23 disorderly conducts, 23 warrant services, 25 uh, assist other police, 13 harassments, one shots fired call, 17 alarms, 31 thefts, three public intoxes, 18 person, or I'm sorry, 18 persons suspicious, man, I'm, I'm all messed up here, I'm sorry. 18 controlled substance cases. You gotta read the next line down, folks, I'm sorry. <laughs> 24 animal complaints, 62 suspicious persons, activities, or vehicles, and three overdoses. Officers made a total of 53 criminal arrests, including one for criminal attempt homicide. Uh, we issued 12 non-traffic citations and 61 traffic citations. Uh, these numbers that you see don't include every traffic stop that we do. So if it doesn't amount in us doing a vehicle search or a citation, the numbers don't really reflect that because the guys won't type uh, the reports on that because it's reported on body cam. And to be honest with you, if they typed every traffic stop they did, they wouldn't be on the road. Because um, for every action they take, they do have to go back and type reports on. So it is time consuming. Officers additionally conducted vehicle and foot patrols of the city parks as well as the sheepskin trail and parking garages. Um, parking garages continue to be an issue that we've been dealing with. I was just over at the uh, councilman Billy was actually on his way over here, or at least in the executive session, and sent me a text message that said, hey, someone's in the stairwell. Uh, we've been continuing to go up there and run people off. Um, I know we talked about cameras in the past, and I hope we continue to move towards that. Um, but our guys are in that parking garage or in the parking garages constantly. So again, if you do not park in the parking garage, do not go in the parking garage because it is posted. You will be giving a warning and then you'll be arrested. Just so we're clear. Mayor, council, any questions? No, thank you all. Thank you, Chief. <laughs> um, fire Department, Pastor Winfrey. Yeah. 
Uh, the Uniontown Fire Department uh, responded on the following incidents for the month of June. Eight fire-related incidents which included one building fire, one dumpster fire, one brush fire, three trash uh, fires, one uh, scorch burn but no ignition fire, one uh, smoke scare but no active fire occurred, 35 uh, rescue-related incidents and 22 being motor vehicle collisions, 10 of those with injuries, one vehicle uh, versus pedestrian accident, two lockout gain access for EMS crews, three extraditions, uh, traditions of uh, ill or injured persons from a building, one elevator rescue, one animal rescue, and five physical rescues. Ten hazardous condition incidents, including one gas leak, three carbon dioxide incidents, three power lines down, and three incidents uh, with uh, uh, short electrical equipment, arcing and scorched electrical equipment. Ten service-related incidents, including four persons in distress, three assist uh, the police department details, and three general public service incidents. 27 fire alarm activations, three severe weather incidents, three public fire education and fire prevention details. These include the pre-planning and building uh, familiarizations as well. Training con conducted by taking, uh, or taken by personnel for the month. The department had over 64.5 man hours of training for the month of June. Apparatus and equipment updates. The ladder truck received uh, new front tires, uh, the scheduled repairs, and, and received its annual PA uh, state vehicle inspection. Miscellaneous specifications for uh, overhead banners will now be accompanying the permit application people receive from the police department. Our department doesn't mind hanging the banners, but we must stress that people please follow the specifications sheet when getting those uh, banners made. If the banner is not uh, constructed the, uh, the specific way, they do not hold up for all the, uh, for all the weather and can become a, a safety hazard if they are torn and tattered. Our personnel uh, participated and set up for the uh, city's 5K race and founding day event with the fire truck show and tell. We also participated with South Union Fire company in their uh, torch uh, truck event. A lot of good fire prevention uh, material and training was also conducted for these two events. Lastly, as he always says, don't forget what, what Thursday night is. Bingo at the Social Hall on Dunbar Street starts at 645 with the doors opening at, uh, at 5 o'clock. Tonight's early bird jackpot is over $3,000. We appreciate all the uh, community support. Directly submitted by Scott A. Gone, Fire Chief. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Um, Public Works, Mr. Podolinski. Uh, good evening, everyone, Mayor and Council. Uh, start off the monthly uh, sewage report for collections was a total of one hundred eighty two thousand two hundred thirty one dollars and twenty two cents bringing this year to date to one million two hundred forty six thousand three hundred thirty six dollars and sixty four cents uh the collections have seemed good here uh we were recently dealing with all the COVID issues and not being able to have shutoffs and i know they were behind here in the past two years but the collection system seemed to be going smooth here now, and I'm glad to see the revenue coming in. As far as the uh, two department for the road crew, uh, we've been keeping up with our uh, sewer system here with multiple backups. Luckily, we've been able to open up most of them. Uh, we've had a few digs and been trying to keep up with the repairs and the new sewer taps for all the buildings that. Uh, are being built along Gallon Avenue and throughout the city here. Uh, recently we had some new hires here. Two of them were in the sewage and one went to the street department and they're a great help and they seem to be fitting in well with the rest of the crew and I'm glad to see them. Uh, I hope they have a long career here with us. Uh, the compost site down at the sewage just recently two weeks ago South Union came down to help us uh, with the operation and some needed maintenance on the machine and I'd just like to thank South Union for 
showing up and helping us with the process there as we are joint with them on that operation. Uh, for the street department, as the mayor said, we finished the uh, portion of the trail, well, the rail remover on Beeson Avenue. I think it turned out well. Uh, I know some downtown businesses weren't too happy, but I know everyone's glad to see the rails removed and the road a lot smoother than it was for all the traffic because that's the main artery for the city here. Uh, and really, that's all I have if no one has any questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you, John. Um, at this time, we have time for public comment. We have the rules and regulations posted on the door like we've had for quite some time. Keep your comments short, be respectful of other people's times. Comment time is three minutes, so we'll take, if there's any public comment, um, we'll take it at this time. Anyone with public comment? Sir? Yes, sir. I'd like to talk to Ken. Could you state your name and your address, please? Kenneth Hannaford. I'm a guy's man engineer. All right, and I'll explain to you in a second. I got a loud voice, so you'll be able to hear me, all right? I vandalized the city of Uniontown. I lived here 81 years. I know it all by heart. I run the streets. I can tell you uh, what what we need, what we don't need. You just can throw it out and that will be fine, all right? What I do is, and if I'm here with too much, please tell me. What if a Kaizen engineer does, all right? They see something, they analyze it, they solve it, and then they report it, all right? I did this for Sony for 15 years, Japan, San Diego, and Newstead. I have everything up here. You might think that I'm like a computer walking on the street. Right now, my threat to you is you live in, you live in a Say a sink right now. Downtown and Union Town is in a sink. All right? A flood is coming, and that's why I'm warning you. Now you can say no, 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 no. Between the blue moon, that Jamison Creek, and between what Plus has done up there, from Mahoney's Bar, the next building's ready to fall in. You see what happened across, if you remember, across Mahoney's Bar, that ramp. Mahoney bought that put storage over there one. The particular mail house has been flooded up God knows how many times. I don't even know who owns that. Uh, does anybody have any idea? Usually the post offices were paid uh, some were building, they, the government would pay them over 30 years. Uh, what's going to happen is the water, I went all the way, I went up the mountain on this sculpture. I tracked it all the way from the other side of the mountain where Mr. Tommy is back, has a home back in the woods. I followed it all the way down the backside of the mountain. I followed where the water truck comes off to it. I followed all the way out to Brownfield. I followed the water coming off of Harry Shields, coming down where they meet, where they start through what we, what we want to call the Redstone Creek. All right? I followed it down along through the lake. Thought maybe it was coming out of that mine which is in Lee. No, it don't go there. It comes down to Lee, which the wall is still there, thank God. And I remember this, I was born on Whiteman Avenue, so I know that whole area. Now, Mr. Kloss, whenever I was five and six, seven years old, 
They had all the cement trucks. They would go dump the load, come back across some dirty electric which has burned down, wish their trucks out, all right, put it right in the crack. When that water comes down there, it takes Mr. Long. Hannaford, could you um, m m wrap up quickly because we have a three minute time limit. I said, Mr. Hannaford, could you wrap your conversation up? We have a three minute time limit and we've exceeded that. There's, there's, there's a three minute time limit oh, for sorry. presenting That's okay. to council. No, I didn't know. And so, so they were giving you the opportunity to, to wrap it up and summarize what you wanted oh, them to know. Who's the engineer? May I ask that? That would be K2 engineer. Uh, K2 engineer. I got, a, I got a wall ready to fall and a pole ready to fall. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's, that's okay. For that, I, if you want to know anything, of, I'm just saying, about Union Town, where the fountain was, we had the number one basketball game. We had the number one BFW game. We had the number one band. We had the number one grocery store teacher. I mean, we had it all. We lost everything because of the Union Town to Morgantown bypass. Bad move. Very bad move. Honestly. That's okay. Th thank you for your time, sir. That's what I call it. The Union Town to Morgantown. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you sir. Thank you for listening. Any other public comment this evening? If not, that's all I have, Mr. Witt. Thank you. Be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Uniontown that council hereby adjourns to meet August 1st, 2024 at 5 o'clock p.m. Uh, Councilman Thomas? Yes. Councilman Winfrey? Yes. Councilwoman Brown? Yes. Councilman Billy? I have to say, just before I, you know, these department head reports, okay, these department heads, the directors of these departments, they've got to be at the meeting. And not in a t-shirt either. So whenever our, our city employees are coming in, be very respectful. You know, this reports that people were giving, I, I'm telling you, I, I'm very disturbed from this fire report. Um, I don't feel it was right for councilman to have to read a report that basically says that his department is not gonna do the things that the city asks. Okay, there are some things. Um, man, I tell you, the chief got me worked up tonight. I'm not happy with what we just heard. I feel that it was extremely wrong to present a letter like that when you're not here to your council person and have that person read that to the public and what it says. Um, and I understand that this department is not happy with what we're asking them to do, but I remind them, and uh, you know, this is the way the union works too, so you guys are all union members down there. So when the city gives you a directive, you follow the directive, because if not, that's considered insubordination. Um, so when a directive is given to any of the departments in this city, by any of the council members, especially, from your director of your department, your council member of your department. Um, what sign of just blatant disrespect, and not even that, disrespect for the city and the taxpayers that pay your uh, salaries. I'm just extremely disappointed. Um, and I'm sorry, because I <laughs> just can't hold that back. Uh, I want to apologize to you. Uh, I just feel that was extremely wrong, and you know, way to leave you hanging out there. Um, I'm just, just, a, I'm, I don't even have words to say for that. Um, I'm going to be reaching out. I'm going to have a conversation too. So I, I, I'm just, just not good. And uh, I vote yes to adjourn this meeting tonight. And Mayor Kirk. Yes. Thank you all for attending.